Okay, going back to taking a look at these gapless rings here. So I've gone ahead and I've installed this, and I went off camera just to mess with this. It's a little bit tricky assembling the the thin scraper underneath the backup part or the uh, back cut part on the underside of that ring. And that's so when it's all assembled, and I'll turn this light on here again, see if you can see this. But once it's all assembled and it's in the bore, when it's compressed, you can see that there's no gap there now because of that small backer there. And then the other half of it is right underneath there. You can see the gap. Hopefully you can see the gap right there. So when that's all compressed, it closes that gap up and then closes the gap up on the main ring itself, which gives you um, that tighter tolerance to be able to run boosted engines, nitrous engines, different types of uh, ways of increasing the power. And of course, you have to have the rings to correspond with that. The reason I am doing this is because I had another set of pistons in an engine and it was sort of an abusive way to test it but I built a turbo system for the engine and then what I did was um, I ran the boost up to 15 pounds and I stacked the ring uh, lands so there was so much pressure on top of the piston rings it cracked and broke the land off the top and it pushed it down to the second ring and then it cracked and broke off the second one and then it locked the oil ring which didn't allow it to flex and seal and do its job so it started smoking and I had increased blow by because all the rings were, weren't able to seal in the cylinder so now I'm going with a better piston which is a forged piston and a set of gapless rings and the that's going to increase my capacity to be able to use the blown engine